spinning friends and welcome back to another episode of Ask Spinning Sarah where you leave me your questions in the comment section below and then I get back to you guys and answer those questions in the next video. So today we are going to answer the questions that you guys asked two weeks ago on the first episode of Ask Spinning Sarah. You guys asked some really awesome questions again, so great job, keep them coming. Leave those questions down in the comment section and I will get to them in two weeks, okay? So, um, a couple of you had like a hive mind of, of sorts. Uh, over the last two weeks of asking questions, which was kind of interesting to see. So I have my questions written down on paper this time, so it's a little easier for me. Uh, I'm not going to read all of the comments that were left because some of you were very kind and left me nice comments. And every single one of you, I appreciate you for leaving comments and the kind things that you guys say. It really does brighten my day every time I read them. So thank you very much. Um, so what I did was I picked out the questions from your, the actual question, from your questions. And I've written them down here and we're going to go ahead and go through them. So SB asks, how to transfer spindle cups to a wheel bobbin? All right, so a wheel bobbin, um, what you can do is you can turn your tension up really high on your wheel, depending on what kind of wheel you have. If you have um, like a shacked matchless or a ladybug or uh, a flat iron or really any of their wheels that can do Irish tension uh, where you have the drive band on the bobbin and the brake band on the pulley, uh, that's gonna have really strong uptake. That's really gonna help you get the fiber on the bobbin quickly. And then you can sit at your wheel with your spindle cop. Um, you know, let's, for argument's sake, say it's a support spindle. You can put the end of your fiber and attach it to your leader and just spin your feet. Uh, and because you have very tight tension, the bobbin should spin and your flyer should stay pretty still. Uh, you don't really want the flyer to spin too many times because the flyer is what's introducing more twist to your singles. So you want the bobbin to pull strongly to get the singles on as quickly as possible so you don't have to, or you're not letting the flyer insert additional twist. It is not something that I really recommend that you do. But what I do recommend for this type of situation, which leads into other questions, and I'm gonna actually flip over to those questions um, in a second. What I do recommend that you do is get some storage bobbins. Um, this particular storage bobbin happens to be a bobbins up storage bobbin. I don't think they're made anymore, um, but they were super cool because they came with this little shaft that goes into the bobbin and locks into place and has a screwdriver bit on the end of it. So you would just put this into your um, electric screwdriver and it'll spin for you. And then you literally just sit with your spindle and let it roll around in a box or on the floor or whatever and you just fill the bobbin as this is spinning from the drill now the reason these are cool is because these have a, a tiny little you probably can't see it they have a teeny teeny tiny little whorl or pulley on these and this teeny tiny little pulley allows you to tension them on your traditional Lazy Kate. Now, if you happen to have an Acreworks Lazy Kate, um, those are nice for any kind of storage bobbin that looks like this, where it is not a weaving bobbin, because weaving bobbins are very small and we don't want to have, we don't want to move a cop to a cop because they're both just temporary cops. And this kind of goes into another question. Um, how do you get from cop to cake? Uh, Shauna asks how to ply when using a support spindle. 
and how to get from cup to cake. So you can put it on one of these. Um, the Woolery has several different types of storage bobbins. Look for ones that have pretty decent capacity. They generally tell you um, the, the storage capacity of the bobbin. They do make some that are cardboard and then other ones that are plastic. I would recommend the plastic ones, especially if you have an acre Kate. And the acre Kate, the way it works is it has a, a pressure tensioning system. So you don't have to have anything for a kind of a brake band to sit into because it's it's putting pressure directly on the, to the bobbin. Um, but it would be fairly simple to uh, take one of those types of plastic storage bobbins from the Woolery and possibly even just glue a piece of plastic uh, onto the top of it to create a pulley to be able to tension it from your Lazy Kate. So that's technically how you do it. You can sit at a wheel with your tension very, very high and get all of the, the yarn onto a bobbin. Uh, but I, I highly recommend going this route uh, because you don't want to increase or decrease, depending on which way you spun your twist by putting it onto a wheel bobbin. All right, going back to how to ply when using a support spindle, um, she had said that she is going to be using her Lendrum double treadle to ply her spindle spun yarn. And uh, I've said it before and I will say it again, I do not ply on my spindles with the exception of ply on the fly. And so for me, what I do is when it's time for me to, let's just break this, this is my current spin. We're going to break this and this part, see how I left this fluffy piece? This, this is important and I'm going to get to it in a second. Um, I take my spindle and I drop it in a cup and I use a ball winder from Fiber Artist Supply Company and I will set this directly on the floor beneath my ball winder and I will just let it go around. And it, it generally goes around like this in my cup and everything is good and fine, okay? Now, if this was a different spindle, if this was a spindle that didn't have this nice uh, whorl down here and it was one of the types of spindles where you needed to do a football style cop, like a Russian spindle or a medieval spindle with a stone whorl. Um, I don't use the cup for that because the football shape cop gets smaller down at the other end. It makes the spindle actually just jump right out of the cup. So what I use for that instance is a cardboard box. This happens to be an ancient <laughs> perfume box from Victoria's Secret. Um, I don't even, I don't, it, it is, it's at least 15 years old. It's probably closer to 20 years old. It's really, really old, but it's just a box and it doesn't seal seal like this little rectangular piece right here, the pink part. Um, it kind of closes it a little bit, but it doesn't seal it. So I can lay my spindle in here. Actually, let me lay it the other way. I can lay my spindle in here and shut this lid and pull my singles. And inside the box, I don't know if you guys can hear it, it's just rattling around in there, unwinding for me. And it lays in the box and the box keeps it safe and I don't have to worry about my spindle rolling all over the place or jumping out of anything because unless you're going super fast, it stays in the box. 
there have been times where I have gone too fast and the whole thing's just jumped out. So don't go too fast. But here's, here's the other part that's important to all of this. And this is how to combine turtles and apply into one cup from Eleonora. Uh, and this also answers your how to get from cup to cake. We're gonna pretend that this fiber is the end of my cup that I've already put on my ball winder. And we're going to imagine that this is the fluffy end that I purposefully did not spin to. I left this piece fluffy. Can you guys see this? Can you see it? It's, it's fluffy, okay. Um, here's why I say to do that. And it's also important that you do this at the beginning of your spindle spin. Like when you start a new cop, try to keep, when you're attaching your leader, try to keep at least an inch, if not two, of nice, fluffy, unspun, not leaderish fiber on your spindle tip. And here's why. Because you already have this whole cop. We're, remember, we're pretending that this is yarn that's already on the ball winder. This whole cop is already on there, but it has this really fluffy end, okay? This fluffy end and this fluffy end are just going to be laid on top of each other, and you're going to use this spindle to draft out those fluffy pieces, right? And then all you've done is made a join in your fiber. Whoa, oops. You've made a join in your fiber. Everything's good. And you are ready to continue winding on that this cup onto the ball winder. Once you get to the end of it again, because you were smart and you listened and you started your fiber with a nice fluffy piece and made sure not to spin that piece. And then you left the big fluffy piece on the end of the cup. You can join them together beautifully and then it's gonna be one super long continuous single that looks as if it's never been broken. It plies as if it's never been broken. Now, if you have turtle cups, it's the exact same setup. When you take your spindle and you are going to make your leader, here's what I recommend doing. Take it, here, I'm gonna break this again and we'll put it over here. When you're making your leader for your spindle cup, hand draft a little bit. And I've said this before in other videos. This is about a hand length, all right? Take this and twist it with your hand just enough to get it to compact a little bit and then fold it in half so you've made a loop and then twist that. This is gonna protect this piece from getting too spun. Then you take that piece and push it into the center hole of your Turkish spindle. P.S., people have asked me this before. This is how I get my um, leaders to come out of the arms of my spindle when I take the arms out 100% of the time. Uh, I just plied a Turkish spindle project and every single cup that I undid here it is worked and here's why so we've taken it and we've put put it up through here can you guys I hope you can see this it's a almost it's probably three quarters of an inch long this little eruption of leader. We're going to take this and we're going to push it straight up into the center. Then when you go to spin and here we go. I got to spin enough to get it so I can show you guys. All right. You've spun your leader. This is your leader. You're all good to go. There's no, no need to go any further. Don't be hard up next to this little fluff. Go on the back side where you can go over and under at least once. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to take this little fluff and trap it 
with your singles. You're trapping it underneath of the singles. It's going to look something like this. And I'll drop a photo in in case that wasn't clear enough. But that trapped piece is going to remain fluffy. So when you take it out, it's going to come out and it's going to be nice and fluffy for you. So when you go to join your cops together, you do it the exact same way as a support spindle. Now let's pretend that this is a full cop, nice and fat. And because you listened, you left the fluffy end on this one. Here is the fluffy end from the beginning of another cop because again, you listened and you left it fluffy. So you're just gonna lay them together just like you're doing a spindle join and just draft them together and everything's going to be peachy keen. So that, Eleonora, is how you combine turtles and ply them into one skein. That's the best way. The other way that I can tell you is this. Actually, let me just put this back. And I'm actually gonna draw this out for you because I don't have spindle cops readily available to be able to show you with yarn. So here is your yarn. You can see how it's plying, yes. Okay, so this is twists in your yarn because you're plying and we're just gonna pretend like we're doing a two ply. So here is one ply of your yarn and this one is the one that's connected to your turtle that hasn't run out yet. And this one just ran out. So here's what I'm gonna tell you to do. I'm going to tell you to unply your yarn a little bit. What I mean by that is take these two and pull them apart a little bit take your new cop and nestle it in up here. So it should look something like this. It should look something like this. You have your existing yarn, the one that's connected to all the other yarn, plus it's still connected to a cop that hasn't run out yet. You have this yarn, which is still connected to the yarn, but it ran out right here. Now, what you need to do is untwist these at least, I would say two inches, if not three, okay? And nestle your new yarn in here and hold it close to the one that ran out. So it's going to become your second yarn or your second single that takes the place of this one that ran out. Then you're going to continue to ply just like you normally do and everything's going to be hunky-dory and we're still plying. See, this little section right here becomes a two to three inch section of three ply yarn. It's going to be a tiny bit thicker, but I can 100% tell you, you're never gonna know, especially if you do it where you hold the new one and the old one really tightly together, like hold them really tightly together and don't allow the new one to fly away. You kind of want to nestle it in there. So as you pull it, you're pulling your plies apart, you want to nestle it into the ply and then make sure that when it comes back down, the end isn't like sticking out like crazy. Like you don't want your end to be crazy up in the air. You want it to be nice and even with everything else. That is how you can ply directly from your cups without having to join anything. You can just lay them down kind of like shingles. You know, you have shingles that kind of go like this and then every once in a while they overlap like this. It, that's just how it is. You just overlap them to make sure that they grip enough and then continue on. I hope that answers your question. If not, let me know and I will try again. Okay. Uh, Brittany asks, 
I've said before that I don't like spinning Corey Dale, and why? <laughs> um, it's not that I dislike spinning Corey Dale. I think Corey Dale is a perfectly fine fiber. It makes a perfectly fine yarn. I have spun Corey Dale uh, with no problems. Uh, however, I do not like the way it feels against my body. So it's not something that I'm gonna wanna put against my neck. It's not something that I'm gonna wanna make a sweater out of because it doesn't feel good against my skin. So I have yet to meet a Corydale that I loved. Uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't a Corydale out there that I would absolutely die over. I'm sure if I got my hands on some Rupert's Corydale, I would be singing a different tune. But as far as plain, uh, Corey Dale comb top has gone it has not been my favorite to wear so I generally don't get it and don't spin it because it's just not something that I enjoy using the end product of um, do I have any favorite fibers yes uh, I would say Polworth is definitely a favorite um, I would say uh, Targi is a favorite I love how much that floofs up and same thing with Rambouillet I love that um, Cormo Cormo is probably number one Cormo is absolutely lovely fiber to spin um, I would happily live in the land of Cormo and die in the land of Cormo and never have to change from the land of Cormo and I would I would be a happy person um, one fiber, and you guys are probably going to like gasp and throw your, your device out the window. Um, I absolutely hate spinning, but love the end product of is BFL. Um, BFL for me has always been a very hairy kind of spin and not like it's hairy, like it gets all over me, but hairy as in it doesn't create a, for me my singles look very fuzzy um like stuff kind of sticks out weirdly um but i have spun plenty of bfl and every single braid of bfl that i have ever spun ended up being a beautiful skein of yarn and a beautiful finished object so while I might not enjoy the actual spinning of that fiber, that is one where I'll spin it because the end product is worth it. Thank you for your question. <laughs> All right, uh, Martha wants me to describe the knots that I was talking about last time and my roll lags. All right, so roll lags are generally made with combed top and that combed top has a long fiber, you know, staple length. And basically what you're doing is you're taking that long staple length and rolling it up into a tiny little turd because that's what I call them. Um, they're, they're rolled up into the tiny little roll legs. And even if the fiber artist doesn't compress them and use her hands to smooth them down, which I'm fairly certain everybody does, um, it compacts the fiber, and you've said yourself that you have to just pull them out, pull out any you know snarls and do another join. I have no problems doing joins. I am all for doing joins. Uh, I join a lot, especially when I spin my faux legs or when I'm spinning from the fold. Uh, so I have no problem doing joins. But these are like actual knots because what's happening is you're taking a piece of fiber and you're kind of like putting it into a circle and then you're taking that and you're letting it pull out from that and anytime you pull anything out from a circle you run the risk of a tangle it's no different than our hair like if we were to put our hair into a tight circle and then pull one strand out of it and keep the rest of it right there it's probably gonna tangle so when I say knots, I kind of mean tangles. And those tangles irritate me. Um, I don't know why. They just do. <laughs> uh, so it's, I have spun 
several ounces of Rolex commercial, I would say commercial, indie dyer made Rolex. And it, it's created absolutely lovely yarn. I've spun them both on drop spindles and on support spindles. My experience has been the same. I do find that if I pre-draft the crap out of my Rolex, um, the tangles don't happen as much. So it could just be the way that I draft creates more knots. I don't know. But unless I'm pre-drafting my indie dyed Rolex, I get knots and that irritates me because I'm looking for a smooth spinning experience and I just generally don't spin from them. Um, when I dis fiber, do I use a hand carter to hold my fiber? No. Uh, when I dis fiber, most often I am dizzing a, actually, you know what? Hang on. All right, so instead of trying to explain it, I'm just gonna show you. Nine times out of 10 when I am dizzing fiber, it's this. It's a section of a bat. This is a 12 Days of Christmas spin along. I know, I'm really, really far behind. Um, I take one end and I smooth it down. And then I take my diz. This diz, I know you asked for the diameter of the holes of this diz. I will put that information right here. So similar to how I get my leader started on a Turkish spindle, I do the same sort of thing with this where I just spin it and fold it in half and spin it in my hand again so it creates an easy entrance into the diz. Then I generally uh, tip my arm up a little bit because gravity will keep pulling this down. And I, it, this is essentially just pre-drafting and all the diz is doing is making sure that the fiber is the diameter of the diz before it is allowed to go through. So you can see that I'm pulling this fiber through. The diz is still right here. And all I'm doing is drafting with my right hand and allowing these fibers to slide through. You don't have to keep your arm up. Uh, I also do it where I just pull and shove and pull and shove and pull and shove. So no, I do not use a clamped carter uh, or a hand carter for this part. Now, I think possibly your question may have not been about carters, but about hand co uh, combs, the ones that are like Wolverine claws. Um, I have a set of Valkyrie wool combs and they came with a pad that you park one of your combs on. And so you're really only using one comb to do all the work. So you comb with one and then you lash it back on to the same one and then you comb with just the one. Then when you've done sufficient passes, then you can use your diz to pull or diz the fiber off of the hand comb. And that, yes, I leave that clamped onto the table and just pull directly from that. Um, let's see. Um, MD or MSDB says, can I do a video on long draw on a treadle wheel? Yes, I can. Can I, I'm going to do that for you, but it's going to take me a little while. Um, because the wheel that I want to show you long draw treadling and long draw with is being mailed to me next week. Then I need to finish it. So that's probably going to be uh, a video that I can get to you late summer. 
<laughs> uh, it's not going to be a quick process to finish the spinning wheel. And so, yes, I will do that video. I want to do it on a specific wheel. It needs to come in and I need to get it finished. Um, and then I will be able to do that video for you. So I beg your patience on waiting for that one. Uh, will spinning from the fold give less yardage? No. No more than spinning from this will give you less yardage. This fiber goes every which way. There is no given direction for this fiber because it is carded and not combed. Um, you know, like, so when I personally card my fibers, I'll put some of them in this way where, you know, the, the, the locks go this way and some of them will go this way. And for the most part, I take my fiber and just pluck it to pieces before I put it into my drum carter. So the fiber goes every which way. So it's not going to matter. Um, combed top is what you usually use to spin from the fold. And let's just do some really, really simple math, okay? If you, and this is also super, super technical, and I don't expect anybody to know this information. If you spin 16 fibers in your single, like you are, you are meticulous, you're using a microscope to make sure that you only pull 16 fibers out of your supply in order to draft, you are going to have 16 individual fibers in that single. That does not change if you have eight fibers that you fold over your finger and then give those to the wheel because those eight fibers folded in half are still going to give you 16 because we're timesing it by two by folding it in half. So it's not going to change your yardage specifically. In fact, I would argue that you're more likely to get less yardage from a single that is spun short forward draft, worsted style versus something that is spun from the fold or from a faux lag. Uh, because you're introducing so much more air into the the fold and faux lags, um, that air makes a difference. That air gives you a lighter weight yarn. Uh, you could have two yarns that are spun from the exact same fiber, but are spun and the exact same diameter of, of yarn. Um, so both end up being fingering weight yarns, okay? Both are spun in two completely separate ways. One of them, probably your short forward draw, is going to be a denser yarn because when you spin short forward, you are sliding your hand backward and smoothing out the fibers and pinching out the, the air, the insulation, the air that is in that fiber. Whereas the same thing or the opposite from spinning from the fold or spinning from a faux lag, you are introducing a, a ton of air. You are not smooth, you shouldn't be smoothing it down. Uh, because you're changing the fiber prep so you can change your drafting method so you can get a different type of yarn. A worsted yarn is sleek and trim, heavier and drapier, warm but not the warmest, versus a woolen spun yarn, which is going to have less drape, way more air, and be way warmer and fuzzier. It's just naturally gonna be a fuzzier yarn. I hope that answers your question. Um, you also asked, do I need to sink my feet to my hands or treadling to your hands? Nope, uh, you can, especially if you are, I wouldn't say sinking. Uh, I would say paying attention to how fast your feet are going and how fast your hands are going and the actual yarn that you are creating. Pay attention to that. And maybe for a little while, count your treadles to your drafts and say, okay, if I treadle five times and I draft three times, here's that yarn. 
do I like the single that I've made for that yarn? And the same thing goes to plying. Treadle five times, you know, slide your hand back and count how many, how many seconds that takes. And do I like this yarn? Is this yarn twisted enough? Is this yarn cohesive and sticking together? If, if all of those things are yes, and you are happy with the way that your yarn looks, then you know that you need to draft twice and move your feet five times. So it's sciency and not sciency. It's only a sciency as you make it. There are people who spin to music, um, but a specific kind of music with the same kind of tempos because naturally we match our body to the tempo of the things that we are hearing. So if you go from, you know, the Nutcracker Suite to <laughs> uh, something else like death metal, uh, you're probably going to change your tempo between the two. Um, so I would definitely suggest being careful what you're watching or what you're doing while you're spinning because we do tend to mirror things. I know I watch my husband play video games a lot and when he gets into intense fights, my feet go faster. My hands also go faster, but my feet go faster and my yarns have changed because of it. So just, I don't think you have to specifically sync everything and be like really, really super aware, but you might want to, until muscle memory kicks in in your spin, you may want to be a little um, cognizant of what's going on, how your body is reacting, how your hands are reacting, how things are going on with your, your feet and your treadling and is, is your wheel pulling too hard? Like there's so many different things going on with a wheel that we could, we could definitely have its, uh, its own separate video. When dizzing, do I need to leave shorter fibers separate from longer? That's really dealer's choice. Um, every, every lock is going to have shorter pieces and longer pieces. You can choose to comb until you get to a, a set limit. So like you only want prime fibers in your spinning fiber and you're gonna pull until you have an inch and a half left on your combs and then you're gonna take that and you're gonna card it and that's gonna be its own separate thing. You can totally do that. Um, but I don't see the benefit of doing that. The only thing that maybe that benefit would be is that you're less likely to have neps in your yarn. Um, you know, like you're less likely to have little balls of fluff form in your yarn. You're also less likely to have pilling in your yarn when you're only using longer staple lengths of fiber. Um, so I don't think it's strictly necessary, but it's, it's definitely whatever you feel most comfortable with and whatever you're looking for in your particular yarn, as is so much of this hobby that we call life. <laughs> All right. Um, Elizabeth wants to know if there is a method or if I have a method of matching spindle choice to fiber characteristics. Is there a weight range that works best for the spindle weight and the yarn weight? And conventional wisdom tells you if you want to spin a heavier yarn, like if you want to spin a worsted or an aran or a bulky weight yarn, to use a spindle that is heavier. And the reason for that is the heavier spindle has more inertia and it will spin for longer to and slower to allow you to spin a fatter yarn on it. And, and similarly, the opposite. If you want to spin frog fur fine yarn on a drop spindle, you're gonna need the lightest weight spindle that you can find. And, or you're gonna need to support spin it because really, really, really fine yarns should best be support spun. And here's what I'm going, that is, that is conventional wisdom. That is what the books are probably going to tell you. And here's what I'm going to tell you. No. <laughs> um, no, you do not have to 
match a yarn and a, a, a spindle unless it is your personal preference. So we've talked a lot about uh, different fiber preps and stuff like that in previous videos. This is also 12 days of Christmas fiber. Uh, it is carded fiber and this fiber, I absolutely love spinning long draw without question. Long draw from a support spindle or long draw actually on an e-spinner. Uh, those two places have just been kind of mac and cheese spinning for me. So often when I get this fiber, um, and not necessarily just 12 days of Christmas fiber, like if I get any kind of carded fiber, I'm more than likely going to either spin it supported or spin it long draw from an e-spinner because it's where I feel most comfortable with that fiber. It's, it's the thing that, well, it, it's like comfort food. It's mac and cheese. It's, it's the easy spin that I don't even have to think about. It's just a joy to do with those particular settings. However, I will say that I have spun bats on drop spindles, turned out beautifully. Um, I did, however, specifically maintain a long draw type of draft with that fiber. Uh, I generally do not recommend mixing your drafts. Uh, so if you have a woolen prep, I'm always going to recommend a woolen spin, like a woolen draft whether you're doing it at a wheel or a spindle, whatever, I don't care. Uh, just, I would, I personally match my drafting to my fiber type. Now, as far as weight, I am of the opinion that you do not let your spindle be the boss of you. If you want to spin frog fur fine hair on a boat anchor, you can do that. It's not going to be easy, but you can do it. Similarly, if you want to spin a bulky weight single on a spindle that weighs eight grams, you could do it. Your spindle is going to backspin much faster, but you can do it. Um, it it's knowing your abilities and knowing what you're trying to accomplish and making it happen. Now, I'm saying this because I personally have inflammation issues and I personally cannot use spindles weighted more than 15 grams. Um, that, that really kind of like whew, <laughs> brings in the, the spindles that are available to me. Um, and even my support spindles, I generally want support spindles that weigh less than an ounce. Uh, my heaviest support spindle that I have is right at an ounce, and it is heavy for me. Um, I also do not super cop my spindles, so uh, my cops are generally a half an ounce, and that's all I will do. So any given braid, a, a, a traditional four ounce braid of fiber, it will, if I don't unwind, which I don't do, uh, it takes me eight spindles to spin a four ounce braid of fiber because I know my limits. And if I don't want to be down and out for days because of inflammation issues, then I know that I can't spend more than a half an ounce per spindle. And that spindle's starting weight has to be 15 grams or less. Um, so that, that basically leaves me with two drop spindle makers that I can work with. And that is Bosworth's and Jenkins Turkish spindles. And I am perfectly happy to stay in those two bubbles. Uh, I have more than plenty spindles. Will I still collect them? Absolutely. But I don't let my spindles be the boss of me. So this, this little spindle, oh, oh good, it didn't break. This little spindle right here is uh, a finch and it is made from plum and it is eight grams. It is a speedy fast little spindle and I have made 
DK weight yarn on this tiny, tiny, tiny little spindle. But it's, it's only the first little bit. It's only the first, you know, little piece of, of fiber that is the hardest for you to get through with backspin. So don't let your spindle be the boss of you. You take your spindles into your own hands. And if you want to spin opposite ends of the spectrum, you do it because you're the boss of your fiber. And also don't let your fiber be the boss of you either. If you want to spin something that wants to spin super fine, but you want to spin thick, then you need to make the fiber do what you want it to do. It's not the boss of you. You're definitely the boss of it. Fiber Fixation wants to know about my first time processing a fleece. So I bought a Shetland fleece sight unseen from all the way across the country. Um, I live in Virginia and the shepherd lived in Oregon and it was beautiful. It was a lovely heathery gray fleece. And I believe uh, her coloration was Emskit. Um, so it was, it was a very, very pretty fleece. Uh, it was also very, very full of VM. And I pulled the prime pieces uh, from this fleece, the ones that were the least dirty and the the most consistent in color. And um, I processed those, I washed them, I combed them, and then I spun those into a yarn. Gorgeous yarn, still have it, it's downstairs. Haven't used it, don't know what I'm gonna use it for. I spun it really thick, I don't know why. Um, I was also a much younger spinner. Uh, this was like much later than you are doing your own fiber processing, by the by. I was, I, I was in probably year two of my spinning journey and I loved spinning the fiber. I enjoyed combing the fiber. I did not enjoy washing the fiber at all <laughs> so once i got through the best pieces of that fleece um the rest of the fleece uh had these like insane needle sharp like scissor blade like minuscule pieces of of I don't, maybe it was hay i don't even know what it was it was ridiculous it was just covered in it um and i have adhd and so my, my dopamine hit had passed by that time. So I got to the point where I was done fooling with it. And the really, really VME, you know, cut your fingers open, sharp, you realize you have a splinter and you don't even, you can't even see it, uh, sort of VM, it ended up becoming mulch. And I'm totally good with that because it was a great learning experience. Uh, I'm a stay at home mom and I homeschool my children. And I know that my time is precious. And so I will only do the things that I want to do. Um, so if that means that I don't wash a fleece, I'm totally good with that. If that means I send my fleece off to the mill for them to wash it and card it and send it back to me so I can just spin it, I'm good with that too. Uh, right now I am calling or I'm sorry, I'm carding that f the, those two fleeces that I have downstairs very, very slowly. Um, and I'm good with that. So I, I get distracted very easily as I'm sure, you know, so I, I just do what makes me happy at the time. And there was a time when fleeces were like the bee's knees for me. And then there was definitely a time that I bought fleeces. And thankfully one of my friends was able to um, buy that, those fleeces off of me because I just, I, I couldn't do it. It, it was too, it was too much pressure on my brain to, to, to be able to handle those. Uh, you also asked, do I check a control card or plyback samples for large spins? Um, I do, but not obsessively. Um, I, 
I have these control cards that I got off Etsy. Uh, they're from Electric Carnation. And you basically just, you print them off, off of your printer, but you have to make sure that your printer is set correctly and you have the correct zoom because this needs to be one inch wide. And then once you know that this is one inch wide, then these lines right here are the correct size for you to be able to use as a, a gauge. I also have one of these um, here. I have one of these. It is a spinner's control card from Hip Strings, and it go. It's the fine, the fine um, fiber variety where it goes from 20 wraps per inch down to 80 wraps per inch. I really like this one too. Um, I like it because it has a divot that you, you like you can put your fingernail in and you can actually put your yarn into that little divot to see if it fits. Um, I keep one of these at every single wheel that I have. And yes, I also, um, I'm, I will check, but maybe every 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so until muscle memory kicks in. And then I know what the fiber is supposed to feel like. And I can spin uh, light fingering weight three ply sock yarn without looking pretty much consistently. So I know what that feels like. I spin that yarn a lot. So if it's something outside of that, I check more off frequently. But if I know that I'm spinning for that particular yarn, I, I don't even bother because I know exactly what it feels like. Um, also, if I'm going to do a large project, I will take an index card and break off my single and wrap that single around the index card and write down things like, what pulley am I using? And um, what uh, drive am I using? Like, am I using uh, Irish tension? Am I using double drive? Am I using scotch tension? Like, what tension system am I using? Um, so I'm... I'm more of a feel person, uh, but I do use the, the spinner's control cards to make sure that I'm kind of on target, knowing that I'm a human and my yarns are going to have variations in them, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, last question, guys. Fiber fixations last question. Uh, she doesn't enjoy plying as much as spinning singles. Me too, friend. Me too. Uh, I, <laughs> I've, since I've gotten my woolly winder, I've tried to get out of the habit, but I used to have plying parties with myself. Um, and I would just sit in the room that I have all my fiber stuff in and I would ply for days because I all my lazy kates would be full of bobbins and I would have a, a wheel that had no more bobbins and I needed the bobbins or the spindles were full and I needed the spindles uh, because I'm gonna continue to spin singles. So I plying for me is not something that I'm like, yes, I get to ply now. It, it, it's not like that for me. Plying is definitely something that I get through uh, because I want the finished yarn and I also want the bobbin or I want the spindle back to be able to use again. So it's okay if plying is not your favorite part. Um, the only thing I will say is you spend a lot of time spinning your singles, a lot of time. Um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience and perseverance and all the P words uh, to be able to spin your singles a hundred percent and you've put a lot of effort into that so don't let your impatience to be back to spinning singles ruin your plying so what i mean by that is uh, while i know it is not the most fun thing in the world to do try not to rush through it try to be aware of your yarn as you're plying. Make sure that your ply twist is where you want it to be. If your ply 
and I said this in my plying twist video, if your ply twist, when it goes into your wheel and onto your bobbin or onto your spindle cop, doesn't look like the yarn that you want to end up with, it's not going to be the yarn that you want to end up with. Twist doesn't just magically appear. It also doesn't just magically disappear. Uh, twist is, is a fluid, but it's not concrete. Uh, you can steam block a sweater or a washcloth for that matter, as long as it's made of wool and watch the, the stitches move. Well, twist is the same way. Twist goes to the skinniest parts, but it stays in the fat parts too. So your fat parts aren't just going to fall to pieces because your twist goes to the skinny parts. So you want to make sure that your fiber or your yarn looks like the end product that you want because what's gonna happen is once you wet finish it without waiting it, please, for the love of all this holy, don't wait your, your, your yarns when you're blocking them. They need to hang into an open loop or at least not be like crazy twisted um, because guess what? If you wait your yarn to make it hang open, as soon as you wash it again, that twist is still there. The twist reactivates. The twist wakes up and says, oh yeah, we were twist once, let's be twist again. And what was once a perfect sweater is now a sweater. Twist is twist, twist will always be twist. So do not rush your plying and make sure that your yarns look like you want your yarns to look like. I'm sorry that you don't enjoy plying. I wish I had a magical pill that we could that I could give to everybody that doesn't enjoy plying <laughs> um, to be able to make them enjoy plying uh, or at least enjoy it more like spinning is spinning and spinning is awesome obviously we all love spinning but one facet of spinning that many people don't enjoy is plying and there is no getting around it unless you're just going to spin singles. And if that's all you're going to do, more power to you. Um, but plied yarns generally equal balanced yarns and balanced yarns are generally what you want for any kind of project that needs to maintain its shape. So don't rush it. And particularly for those of us who have ADHD, find something that you do enjoy to do at the same time. So you can listen to an audiobook, you can watch a movie that you've seen before and you can take your eyes off of. Uh, listen to your favorite music. Again, make sure that you're continuing to go at the same rhythm even if the music changes because we tend to get in rhythm with the music. Um, Whatever you, if you need to say every 15 minutes, I get to eat a jelly bean while I'm plying, then do that because that's a way for you to get your dopamine that you need to get through it, particularly if you are ADHD, which you have said that you are. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please do like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, Let's see, we have channel memberships available. They are one, two, or three dollars a month. And depending on what level you choose, it gets different perks or bonuses. I will be doing channel member only videos here soon, specifically about the new spinning wheel that is coming in that I mentioned previously. Uh, so if you were interested in following along with the uh, opening and unboxing and finishing of this magical unicorn wheel that I've managed to secure, please consider becoming a channel member. I have dropped the link to become a channel member in the description box below. Um, until next time, guys, leave me your comments or questions down below, and we will see you in two weeks for the next video. Happy spinning, everybody.